thought held in mind produce after their kind. What you think becomes your reality. Earl Nightingale in this audio program, The Strangest Secret says that you become what you think about. Ralph Waldo Emerson summarized this idea more than 100 years before by saying, a man becomes what you think about most of the time. The law of mind is extremely powerful and is in many ways a basic law for explaining many of the other ways that you refer to mind action. The natural extension of law of mind is the third law of success called the law of mental equivalency. This law says that our primary responsibility to your soul is to create a clear and accurate mental equivalent of what you wish to experience in each dimension of your external life. If you want to be happy, you need to be clearly defined for yourself and create the mental equivalent or a picture of exactly what happens means to you. If you wish to enjoy health and long life or happy relationships or financial prosperity, you need to create in your mind an exact detailed picture of what you desire. As a result of a whole series of other laws that I'll be discussing, this becomes the critical starting point that begins inevitably to lead you to the realization of your dreams and goals. The fourth law of success is called the law of correspondence. This law has been talked about for perhaps for a thousand years and it's one of the fundamental laws that explains human experience. It simply says that as within, so without, it says that your outer life will tend to be a mirror image of your inner life. Your external world will tend to correspond almost exactly to what is going to inside both your conscious and subconscious minds. There are four major areas where you see the law of correspondence working all the time. The first is simply in your attitude. Whatever your attitude is, often before you even say anything, people will reflect, reflect it back to you in a way that you thought, to you and treat you as within, so without. The second area where the law of correspondence is evident is in your relationships. Your relationships will almost perfectly mirror your attitude and your personality. If you're a good and happy person, you will have good and happy relationships. As you become a more patient and tolerant and loving person, your relationships will reflect this almost immediately, very much as a mirror will do. The third area of the guidance that you see in your health. Much of your health can be directly traced to a specific attitude that causes you to suffer from minor and major illnesses. The extensive work that is done in the area of hustling medicine seems to that there are corresponding attitudes of mind for most illnesses that you or I suffer from the common cold and flu, all the way up to the most serious illnesses that are often life-threatening. Whenever you're anxious or upset or unhappy for a reason, for any period of time, your body will begin to reflect those feelings. The entire basis of psychomatic medicine is the conclusion that your mind psycho makes your body soma sick. What your mind harbors your body eventually express. The fourth application of law of correspondence is that your external world of material accomplishment will exactly correspond to your internal world of preparation. The more knowledge and skill you gain that helps you to be more effective in your work, the more you will be paid. You cannot hope to acquire or achieve anything more on the outside until you acquire or achieve it on the island. The law of correspondence reigns supreme. The fifth law of success is the law of belief, which says that whether you believe it with emotion becomes your reality. You always have a tendency to act in a manner constant with your innermost belief and convictions. Your belief, in fact, acts like a filter or a screen that it your incoming information and only allows into your conscious awareness that th things that you've already decided are truly about yourself and the world. William James of Howard said, belief creates the actual fact. In the Bible it says, what's over a man thinketh, in the heart so it's he. For example, if you absolutely believe that you are meant to be great success in life and no matter what happens, nothing can stop you from being achieving the greatness that is yours. You 
You will act in a manner constant with the belief you will eventually make it come true if you doubt your ability to be successful for any reason. These negative beliefs will be demonstrated in your tendency to hold yourself back. The most important part of law of belief is the necessity for you to question your own sublimiting belief. These are the beliefs that act like the brakes on the potential. These are the nagging doubts and fears that people have about themselves and their abilities that cause them to sell themselves short. When you have self-limiting beliefs, you have a tendency to settle for less than you may be capable of. Self-limiting beliefs revolve around your ability to lose weight or quit smoking or earn a certain amount of money or be attractive to members of the opposite sex or develop new abilities that are more conductive to your success and happiness. One of the most important steps you can take forward achieving great success is for you to question these self-limiting beliefs. You might even ask others who know you will what self-limiting beliefs they seem to think that you have the, that may be holding you back. Remember, self-limiting beliefs are often used as excuses. A good way to test your self-limiting beliefs is to ask yourself what they were anyone else with the limitation and perceive you have nonetheless gone on to achieve success. You can also look at your own actions and decide what it is that you truly believe. Remember, it's not what you say or hope or wish or intend that is true expression of your values and beliefs. It's only what you do. Children are very aware of this. They ignore the advice of their parents when their parents say, do say I say, not as I do. The fact is, we all seem to know that a person, man's action, are the true reflection of their innermost convictions. There is a great deal of confusion and happiness in the world today because many people feel that if they say something emphatically enough to write it down, it means that they truly believe, but this is false. You only truly believe what you do. Your actions do speak far more loudly than your words. For example, if you truly believe in the values of persistence and dedication, it will be evident in the things that you do every single day. If you truly believe in the values of honesty and integrity and self-discipline, you will demonstrate these qualities in your every behavior. In fact, you can tell what a person values by looking at what they did in the past when the pressure was on. It's only when you're forced to make a choice that you know what it you really, really value. For example, when you have to choose between family and work or between money and honesty, your true values come out. The wonderful and important thing about your value is that you can develop them in yourself by disciplining yourself to act constant with them, even if you haven't yet made them a fixed part of your character. The seventh law of success is the law of motivation, which says that everything you do is triggered by inner desires and urges and instincts, many of which may be at unconscious level, and your attitudes and behaviors will be determined by your dominant motivation, by what you really want and need in life, not by what you think you want. This is an extension of law of values. It's very important for you to understand. There is a something formula called ABC formula of human motivation and human action. The ABC stands for antecedents, behavior, and consequences. The antecedents are things that happen before the behavior. The behavior are the things you do. The consequences of what happens as a result of your behavior. We know that psychologically, only about 50% of your motivation comes from antecedents, come from what you read and learn or are told to do or not do. However, about 85% of your motivation comes from your expectations. What you think will happen is your beliefs about the consequences, about the future, that cause you to behave in a certain way. The clearer you are about the consequences of your action, and the more intensely you desire to enjoy the consequences that you behaviors may lead to, the more motivated you will be. This is why it's important to have absolute clarity with regard to your goals in each area of your life in order for you to be motivated to perform at your very best. An important point with regard to the 
ABC formula is that your behaviors are not guaranteed to achieve the consequences that are desired, but every behavior and action that you engage in will generate a consequence of some kind. One of the most important part of addressing motivation and behavior is to that both action and inactions have consequences. What you do as well as what you fail to do will have a consequence in your future and sometimes the consequences can be dramatic and last lasting. A good exercise in success is for you to write, write out a description of what the type of person you would like to be and life that you would like to be living. The most powerful faculty that you have is your ability to think, your ability to understand. them. The more accurately you can think about who you are and what you want to accomplish and how you to accomplish it, the more effective and successful you will be. The eighth law of success is law of subconscious activity. It has several applications. The first part of this law is that whatever thought or idea mixed with emotion you held in your conscious mind will be accepted as a command by your subconscious mind. That means that whatever thought, idea, or goal you can hold in your mind on a continuing basis, you can have basics. Your subconscious mind will go to work to organize all your thought and action to bring it into your reality. If you desire to earn or you maintain a certain amount of money and you think about it continually, day and night you see even means possible to drive this desire and hope deep into your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind will begin committing more and more of this reserve capacity for bringing that goal and desire into your life. The second part of law of subconscious activity is that your subconscious mind, once you give it the proper command, will trigger your rectangular cortex and its function. The rectangular cortex activating system. Your cortex is small, figure-like part of your brain that alerts you to events or circumstances around you that you are consent with your dominant desires and concerns. For example, if you decided that you wanted to buy a red sports car, that desire would signal to your cortex that red sports car of a new series paramount important to you. From that moment on, you would see red sports cars everywhere, even black away, you would become extremely alert and sensitive to red card sports as well as to means of attaining one of them. If one of your goal is to achieve financial independence and you imbue this goal with your intense desire, your cortex will cause you to be extremely sensitive to kind of opportunities around you what would help you to earn more money. You would hear and see things everywhere that you might have been unaware of completely absence of having established this goal and planted it in your subconscious mind. The third part of law of subconscious activity is that your subconscious mind, which controls your automatic nervous system and all of your muscles, nerves, actions, and reactions, also controls your body language and your tone of voice. Professor Morbian of the University of California at Santa Barbara has conducted that when you communicate with others, fully 55% of your message you send is contained in your body language. 30 Eight of the message you send is contained in your tone of voice, and only 7% of the message is contained in the actual word that you use, and your body language and tone of voice is largely controlled by messages about yourself and your goal that you've sent to your subconscious mind as a result of the way you think and feel. For example, when you've had a success of any kind, you send a charge of emotional energy to your subconscious mind that tells it that you're a winner. For some time afterward, you want Talk and talk and act and think like a winner. Your step will be brisker, your voice will be stronger, your eyes will be more focused, and your body language will signify this belief about yourself. Your subconscious mind will accept your predominant emotional thought and organize your entire body, voice, and tone to fit pattern constant with it. The ninth law of success is the law of expectation. It's often called the law of self-fulfilling prophecy. It's one of the most powerful of all laws because it's simplicity. This law simply says that whatever you expect with confidence will have a tendency to materialize in your life. You get not what you want, but what you expect with the greatest intensity for this reason. An attitude of positive self expectancy seems to go hand in hand with a great success in any area of your life. The wonderful thing about the love expectation is that you have the power to manufacture your own expectation. You can decide to accept only good things to happen to you. You can walk and talk act as you believe the entire world was conspiring to help you to 
achieve your goals. You can become what W. Seligman Stone often referred to as an inverse paranoid. You can become convicted that the entire world is conspiring to do your good. The way that you apply the law of expectation is by confidently looking for the good. In every person and in every situation, when you have a temporary setback, you can look into the setback for the valuable lesson that it might contain. Instead of becoming upset, you can say to yourself something like, I believe in the perfect outcome of every situation in my life. This affirmation causes you to approach everything you do with a more positive and often the optimistic attitude. The most powerful of all expectations are expectations you have of yourself. You should approach everything you do with an attitude of flame, confidence, self-expectancy. You should expect to be your successful more times than you are unsuccessful. Expect to win more times than you lost. And expect to eventually achieve your goal if you carry on long enough. The tenth law of success, which applies to many other areas of life, is called the law of concentration. It says that whatever you concentrate on and think about it repeat repeatedly with emotion tends to become more and more a part of your inner and outer life. Some of the most important work in psychology shows that if you dwell upon qualities that you wish to develop, like courage and sincerity and persistence, you tend to actually believe, build those qualities break by break into your character and personality. The law of concentration goes hand in hand with the law of subconscious activity and it largely explains the person that you are today. Whatever you concentrate on in the past and are concentrating it on the present is having a major impact on your conduct or behavior. What you concentrate on largely determines the quality and quantity of result that you get and the success that you enjoy. The eleventh law of success is the law of habit. It says that virtually everything that you do it automatic and unthinking. You are largely a creature of habit. It says that from the time you get up in the morning and get to the work and get to the bed at night, you have a tendency to follow the path of least resistance as to the thing that you become accustomed to doing in the past. You eat the same food and breakfast. You brush your teeth with the same space. You take the same road to work. You create people with the same words. You go to the lunch at the same time. You work in the same way. Now, there is nothing wrong with establishing habits that enable you to simplify your life. In fact, your life becomes successful to the degree to which many of things you once needed to concentrate on, such as driving a car, have become automatic and unthinking. When you make certain things habitual so they no longer require thought. Your mind then becomes free to concentrate on other things that can be more helpful to you in achieving the things that you really want. There are several parts of law of habits and the first of these is that the habits are hard to form but easy to live with. The second part of the that bad habits are easy to form but hard to live with. One of the hardest of all things to change are bad habits which are counterproductive to get results, to goals that you want to achieve. It's therefore important for you sit down and think through the habits that you have and analyze them carefully. You need to decide whether or not they are moving you towards your goal and away from them. Remember one of the most important of all observation on success is what everything you do either move you in one direction or moves you in the other. Nothing is neutral. Everything counts. If a habit isn't helpful, it's hurtful. If a habit is not leading you to success, it's probably that basically leading you to failure. The way that you overcome that habit is simply you override them by the development of new more positive habits. For example, if you have a goal swing that's causing your ball to go into the rough, you can override that habitual swing by taking lessons and learning how to hit the ball differently. If you have a habit of getting up later than you should, you can override that habit by repeatedly getting up earlier until the new habit becomes the habit that determines and dominates your thinking and your action. By practicing the law of concentration, in conjunction with the law of habit and thinking continually about how you would be with your habit or behavior. You drive this message into your subconscious mind and you eventually begin to behave in a manner consistent with the new habits you wish to form. This brings us the 12th law. One of the most important of all the law of success and this is law of attraction.
attraction. The last attraction says that you are living magnet and that you inevitably attract into real life and people, events and circumstances that harmonize with your dominant thoughts. This is why we say that whatever you can hold in your mind on a continuing basis, you can have whatever thought you hold clearly and mix them with emotion begin setting up a force fill of mental energy that begins driving towards you that thinks that you need to achieve that goal. This law of attraction has been written about for hundreds, if not thousands of years. It's contained in the old folk saying, like the threat like, it's like big and slide. You've perhaps heard birds of a feather flock together. My friend Mark Hansen says that whatever you want wants you. These are ways of saying that your mind is extremely powerful and that whatever you think. Emotional lines become a form of energy like a magnet that's attracting the events and circumstances you experience in your life. In resonance, it's extremely for example that if you have to piano in a large room you hit the key of the C on one of the pianos and then walk across the room to the other piano. The C knows or string on the second piano will be vibrating in the perfect harmony or resonance with the C string on the first piano. One of the most common examples of this law is when you enter a room full of people and you almost inevitably have a sympathetic resonance or attraction with someone else in the room. You will have a tendency to gravitate toward a person with whom you are comfortable and compatible and that person will have a tendency to gravitate towards you very often. Two things people People, the single people at the social gathering will have the level of sympathetic resonance that draws them towards each other and into conversation. By the same token, when you have a clear, very clear idea and goal, you will tend to achieve to attract people to you and be attracted to people who have ideas and information and resonance that can help you to realize that you goal. Another illustration of law of attraction is its opposite, which is law of Repulation. When you begin to become a particular person because of the way you change your thinking, you will find yourself attracted to people who are similar to you. And you will also find yourself repealing and being repelled by people who don't think the way you do. This law explains why positive people tend to associate with the other positive people and why negative people tend to associate with the other negative people and why neither group finds the other group of very most interests. You can begin to fill your life with the people that you respect and admire by simply becoming the person in your thoughts that will attract them out to you. The certain love success and love choice which says that you are always free to choose the content of your conscious mind but in so doing you're choosing every other part of your life. Your thoughts control your reality in sense no one else but you can think for you. The thoughts that you choose to harbor determines everything that happens in your life. The wonderful thing about love choice is that it says that you have complete freedom to think and therefore to be anything that you intensely desire. The choice is always up to you. The law of choice also says that you are where you are and what you become you have chosen to be there. If you're not happy with where you are and what you are and what you do, it's up to you to choose to be in and do something else. The 14th law of success is love optimism which simply says that positive mental attitude goes hand in hand with success and happiness in virtually every dimension of life. The quality of optimism is quality that makes you into a cheerful and pleasant person. A person that other people like and want to be around and help. The most successful men and women tend to be very likable people. The more optimistic you are, the happier you will be in the moment to moment. And the more things you will be willing to attempt. The 15th love success, the love change. You simply, that change is inevitable. The constant we have in life is that of change. Everything is changing, even as you listen to this tape. But this is a wonderful thing about the love change, is that nothing is fixed either. All progress requires change, and since change is happening in any case, you can be and have and do anything you want by simply harnessing the forces of change and taking advantage of them. The love change also says that your life can only get better when you get better, but not until. It says that you cannot remain the same same and somehow improve. This law says that if you don't take advantage of change, you will end up bring being the victim of change. Things will happen over which you have little or no control and you simply have to go along and adjust your action and behaviors to whatever occurs. Now let me tell you a story that is true. In more cases 
that not. Once upon a time, there was a young man from an average home, an average education, working at an average job who had an average group of friends. Like most average young people, he was primarily interested in the gold and sports and television. He liked to have a good time and he spent most of his money enjoying himself. He looked upon his job as a necessary evil that paid for his average lifestyle. And like most average people, he was going nowhere with his life. Then one day, something happens to him. Perhaps he reads a book that woke him up or listened to a program and attended a motivational seminar. Whatever it was, he wasn't the same afterward. He realized that he controlled, choose to do and be something else. He applied the law of choice. By the way, by the law of change, he realized that his life could only improve if he began changing a positive direction. Using the law of cause and effect, he made some decisions about what he wanted to accomplish and then began searching out the causes of effect he desired. By the law of optimism, he was positive toward himself and his possibilities. He expected good things to happen, triggering the law of expectation. He went to work on his thinking and he began to dwell the law of concentration on his ideal lifestyle. By the law of subconscious activity, he begins to walk and talk like the person he envisionized himself becoming. He also began noticing opportunities to advance himself that he hadn't seen before. As he changed his thinking, he triggered the law of mind, the law of mental equivalency, and he created a clear picture of his goal by the law of correspondence. His outer world began, began to reflect his new, improved inner world. His beliefs about himself began to change. And by the law of attraction, people and resources began to appear to help him move toward his goal. As he concentrated on his desires, his values and motivation changed and he began developing the habits that lead you to success in no time all day by bringing his life into alignment and harmony with the level of success he began moving forward at a rate that surprised even him and so can you the law of success are based on the foundation principle that in order for you to succeed you must first decide what success means to you you can then begin to apply this law in your definition of success that bring more rapidly into your reality there is a special quantity that stands out one quality that all great leaders have in common is the quality of vision. Leaders have vision, non leaders do not. What's in it then that leaders think about most of the time? We call this leadership quality future orientation. Leaders think about the future and what they want to accomplish and where they want to arrive. Sometimes down the road, leaders think about what they have and want and can be done to achieve it. The good news is that when you begin to think about your future as well, you begin to think about a leader and you will soon get the same result that leaders get. Just think, the farther you think into the future, the better decisions you will make in the present to assure that the future becomes a reality. For example, if you save $100 per month for the age of 20 to the age of 65, you invested that money in an amount found earning an average 10% of per month over time. You would be worth more than $120,000 when you have retired. In person strategic planning, you should begin with the long term view of your life as well. In the process of idealization, you create a five year fantasy for yourself and begin thinking about what your life would look like in a five years if it were perfect in every aspect. The biggest single obstacle to setting goals is self limiting beliefs. You may believe yourself to be inadequate or inferior in areas such as intelligence, ability, talent, or something else. You set either no goal or no laws, goal that are below what you are truly capable of accomplishing by combining idealization and future orientation. You can or neutralize and cancel the process of limiting your image for the moment that you have no limitations at all. You imagine that you have all the time, all the talents, all the abilities that you could ever require to achieve any goal you could set for yourself. No matter where are you in your life, these men and women who had achieved only average results at work for many years but who suddenly exploded into great success and accomplishment, every one of them begin engaging in what he called blue sky thinking. In blue sky thinking, you imagine that all things are possible for you. Look like up into a clear blue sky, perfect, with no limits. You project forward several years and imagine that your life were perfect in every respect. Sometimes in the future, you then look back to where you today and ask yourself the question, why would you have done to happen for me to have more created perfect future? When come back to where you are in the present and in your own time and you ask what would you have to happen in 
this point forward to me to achieve all my goals sometimes in the future. When you practice idealization and future orientation, you don't settle for smaller goals of half success. Instead, you dream big dreams and project yourself forward mentally as though you're one of the most powerful people in the universe. You decide what you really want before you come to the present moment and deal with what is possible for you within your current situation. Imagine that you work for a perfect five years from now. Answer this question first. Why would I look like? Second, why would you be doing? Third, why would you be doing? Fourth, if your work life was perfect, who would you be working with? What level of responsibility would you have? Fifth, what kind of skill and ability would you have? Sixth, what goals would you be accomplishing? And seventh, if your work for life was perfect, what level of statue and position would you have in your field? When you answer this question, imagine that you have no limits. Imagine that everything is possible for you. Now, idolize your perfect financial life sometimes in the future. Ask this question first. How much do you want and to be want earning in the five years from today? Second, what lifestyle do you want to have? What home do you want to live in? Third, what car do you want to drive if your financial life was perfect? Fourth, what mental luxuries do you want to provide for yourself and your family? Fifth, how much do you want to have in your bank account five years from now? Sixth, how much do you want to be saving and investing each month and each year, both in solid moment and percentages? And seventh, how much do you want to be worth when you are retired? Imagine that you have a magic cell. You can write down anything you want. You can cause anything that may happen in the past and create whatever picture you desire. Now imagine your perfect family life. Look at your family and relationship today and project five years into your future. First, if you have family life for perfect five years from now, why would it took life? Second, who would be with? Who would be no longer to be with or have your life? Third question, if your family life were perfect, where and how would you be living? Fourth, what living standards would you have or your lifestyle would be enjoying? And fifth, what relationships would you have with the most important people in your life five years from now if everything were perfect in every respect? When you fantasize and imagine your perfect future, the only question is ask how. Unsuccessful people always wonder whether or not the particular goal is possible. High achievers, on the other hand, only ask the question how. Then they set to work, find ways to make their vision and goal their realities. Relieve your level of health and fitness in every area as well. Project ahead five years and ask yourself this question if you were perfect physical specimen five years from now how would you look feel or appear second what would you be in your ideal way third how much would you be exercising each week and each day fourth what would you be in your overall level of health and fitness and fifth what changes would you have to make starting today in your diets exercise routines and health habits you to enjoy superb physical health sometimes in the future but then imagine that you are important and influential person a player in the community if your social and community statue and involvement were ideal here are some questions first what would you be doing second what organization would you be working with or contributing to and third what your causes that are strongly believe and its support and how could you become more or involved in those areas in action orientation men and women who accomplish tremendous things in life are intensely action orientated they are moving all the time they are always busy if they have an idea they take action on it immediately on the other hand low achievers and non-achievers are full of good intentions but they always have an excuse for not taking action today it's well said that road is hell is paved with a good intention examine yourself in terms of your personal inventory of skills knowledge talent orientation education and ability if you are developed to the highest level possible for you and there is virtually no limits to which you become developed answer this question first what additional knowledge and skills would you have acquired five years from now if your life which was ideal in every respect second in what areas would you be recognized as absolutely excellent in what you do and third what would you be doing each day in order to develop the knowledge and skill you need to be one of the top performer in field someone in the future once you've answered this question the only question you ask is now how how do you attain the skill and expertise you will require to lead your field in the years ahead especially when you decide how would you like in live 
day and the day you're out. Your ideal lifestyle. Design your perfect calendar from January 1st to December 31st. Here are some, some ways and questions for you. First, what would you like to do on your weekends and vacation if you could do anything at all? Second, how much time would you like to take up each week, each month, and each year? Third, where would you like to go if you could go anywhere and cost was no object? And fourth, how would you organize your life if you had no intention and complete control over the time? When you have clear, exi exciting goals and ideas, you will feel happier about yourself and your world. You will be more positive and optimistic. You will be more cheerful and enthusiastic. You will feel internally motivated to get up and get along every morning because every step you're taking will be moving you in the direction of something that is important to you. The future is going to be better than anything that may have happened in your past. And there are no limits. The clearer you can be about your long-term future, the more rapidly you will attract people and circumstances into your life and help make the future a reality. The greater clarity you have about who you are and what you want, the more you will achieve, the faster you will achieve it in every area of your life. Now, your subconscious mind will accept your predominant emotion thoughts and organize your entire body, voice and tone to fit person constant with it. The ninth law of success is the law of expectation. It's often called the law of self-fulfilling prophecy. It's one of the most powerful of all laws because it's simply and its predictability. The law simply says that whatever you expect with confusion ha will have a tendency to materialize in your life. You get not what you want, but you want to expect with the greatest intensity. For this reason, an attitude of positive self expectancy seems to go hand in hand with a great success in every area of your life. The wonderful thing about love expectation is that you have the power to manufacture your own expectation. You can decide to expect only good things to happen to you. You can walk and talk and act as though you believe in it. Our goal was conspiring to help you to achieve your goal. You can become what W. Elman Stone often referred to as convinced. You can become convinced that the entire world is conspiring to do a good thing. The way that you apply the love expectation is by confidently looking for the good in every person and every situation. When you have a temporary setback, you can look into that setback for the valuable lesson that is might contain. Instead of becoming Upset. You can say to yourself something like, I believe in the perfect outcome of every situation in my life. This affirmation causes you to approach everything you do with more positive and open and awesome, optimistic attitude. The most powerful of all expectations are the expectations you have for yourself. You should approach everything you do with the attitude of love, confidence, self expectancy. You should expect to be successful more times when you're unsuccessful. Expect to win more times than you lose and expect to eventually achieve your goal if you carry on long enough. The tense law of success which applies to many other areas of love is called the law of concentration. It says that whatever you concentrate on and think about repeatedly with emotion tends to become more and more part of your inner and outer life. Some of the most important work in psychology show that if you dwell upon qualities that you were to develop with courage and sincerely you tend to actually build those qualities break by break into your character and personality. The law of concentration goes hand in hand with the law of subconscious activity and it largely explains the person that you are today. Whatever you've concentrated on in the past and are concentrating on what you are concentrating on the present is having a major impact on your conduct or behavior. What you concentrate and largely determines the quality and quantity of the result that you get and success that you enjoy. The elements law of success is the law of habits. It says that virtually everything that you do is automatic and unthinking. You are largely a creature of habit. It says that four months time and get up in the morning, the time you go to the bed at night. You have the tendency to follow the path of least resistance to do the things that you become accustomed to doing in the past. You eat the same foods for breakfast. You brush your teeth with the same toothpaste. You take the same route to work. You greet people with the same work. You can go lunch every time at the same time. And you, you work in you know, the same way. This is where nothing wrong with establishing habits and enabling you to simplify your life. In fact, your life becomes successful to be degree to which many of the things you once needed to concentrate on, such as driving a car, have become automatic and thinking. When you make certain things habitual, so they no longer require thoughts, your mind then becomes free to 
concentrate on the other things, then you can be more helpful to you in achieving the things that you really want. There are several parts of the law of habits, and the first of these is that good habits are hard to form but easy to live with. The second one is that bad habits are easy to perform but hard to live with. One of the hardest of all things to change are bad habits, which are counterproductive to the goals that you want to achieve. It's therefore important for you to sit down and think through the habits that have and analyze them carefully. You need to decide whether or not they're moving you towards your goals and away from them. Remember, one of the most important all observation on success is that everything you do either move you in one direction and move you in the other. Nothing is neutral. Everything counts. If a habit isn't helpful, it's hurtful. If a habit is not leading you to success, it's probably leading you to failure. The way that you overcome that habit is simply to override them by developing up new, more positive habits. For example, if you have a goal swing that is causing you ball and to go into the rough, it's the override the habitual swing by taking risks and learning how to hit the ball differently. If you have a habit of getting up later, then you should. You can override that habit by repeatedly getting up earlier until the new habit becomes the habit that dominates your thinking and your action. By practicing of law and concentration, in conjunction with the law of habit and thinking continually about how and would you be with a new habit and behavior, you drive this message into your subconscious mind and you eventually begin to believe you behave in a manner constant with a new habit you wish to form. This brings you to Love. One of the most important of all law of success, and that's the law of attraction. The law of attraction says that you are a living magnet and that you inevitably attract into your life for people, events, and circumstances that harmonize your dominant thoughts. This is why you say that whatever you can hold in your mind on a countless basis, you can have whether thought you hold clear or mixed with emotion begins setting up for the first field of mental energy and begins driving forward you the things that you need to achieve the goal. The law of attraction has been, has been written about hundreds, if not thousands of years. It's contained in an old folk saying, like it's right like, life begins like, and you perhaps heard birds of feather flock together. My friend Mark Hansen says that whatever you want, wants you. There are all ways of saying that your mind is extremely powerful and the weather you think. Emotional lines become from an energy. Like a magnet, this is attracting the events and circumstances you expertise into your life. In music, the law of attraction is often referred to as the law of sympathetic resonance. It explains, for example, but if you have two pianos in two large rooms and have the key of C on one of the pianos and then walk across the room to the other piano, the C note is ring and the second piano will be vibrating in the perfect harmony and resonance with the C string. Yeah. One of the most common examples of this law when you enter a room full of people and you almost invariably have a sympathetic resonance attraction with someone else in the room. You have a tendency to gravitate toward the person with whom you are comfortable and compatible and the person will have a tendency to gravitate towards you. Very often, the single people at the social gathering will have a level of sympathetic resonance that draws them toward each other and into conversation. By the same token, when you have a very clear goal and idea, you will tend to attract people to you and attract to people who have ideas, information, and resources that can help you to realize that goal. Another illustration of law of attraction is its opposite, which is the law of repulation. When you begin to become a particular person because of the way you change your thinking, you will find yourself attracted to people who are similar to you, and you will also find yourself repelling and being repelled by people with the thing they do you know. The law explains why positive people tend to associate with other positive people and why negative people tend to associate with negative people and why neither group find the other group of very much interest. You can begin to follow your life with the people that you respect and admire by simply becoming a person in your thought that will attract them to you. The 13th law of success is the law of choice, which says that you are always free to choose the content of your conscious mind. But in so doing, you're choosing every part of your life, your thought, control your reality, as since no one else but you can think of you. The thought that you choose to harbor determines everything that happens in your life. The wonderful thing about the law of choice is that it says that you have complete freedom to think and therefore 
to be anything that you intensely desire. The choice is always up to you. The law of choice also says that you are where you are and what are you because you are chosen to be there. If you're not happy with where you are and what you are, it's up to you to choose to be and do something else. The 14th law of success is law of optimism, which simply says the positive mental attitude goes hand in hand with success and happiness in virtually every dimension of life. The quality of optimism is the quality that makes you into a cheerful or pleasant person, a person that other people like and want to be around and help. The most successful men and women tend to be very likable people. The more optimistic you are, the happier you will be moment and moment. And the more things you will be waiting and willing to attempt. The 15th law of success, the law of change, says simply that change is inevitable. The only constant, constant we have in life that of change. Everything is changing. Even you listen to this tape, but the wonderful thing about law of change is that nothing is fixed either. All progress re requires change. And since change is happening, in any case, you can hand and have do anything thing you want by simply harnessing the focus of the change and taking advantage of them. The law of change also says that your life can only get better when you get better, but not until. It says that you cannot remain the same and somehow improve. The law says that if you don't take advantage of change, you will end up being the victim of change. Things will change over which you have little or no control. You will simply have to go along and adjust your action and behavior to whatever occurs. Now, let me tell you a story that is true in more cases than not. Once upon a time, there was a young man from an average family with an average education working at an average job who had average group of friends. Like most of average young people, he was primarily interested in girls and sport and television. He liked to have a good time and he spent most of his money enjoying himself. He looked upon his job as a necessary evil that paid his average lifestyle. And like most average people, he was going nowhere with his life. Then one day, something happens to him. Perhaps he read a book that woke him up and listened to an audio program and attended a motivational seminar. Whatever it was, he wasn't the same afterwards. He realized that he could choose to do and be something else. He applied the law of choice. By the law of change, he realized that his life could only prove he began changing a positive direction. Using the law of cause and effect, he made some decisions about what he wanted to accomplish and then began searching out the cause of effect he desired by the law of optimism. He was positive forward himself and his possibilities. He expected good things to happen, triggering the law of expectation. He went to work on his thinking and began to dwell the law of concentration on his lifestyle ideal. By the law of subconscious activity, he begins to work and walk and talk like a person he envisaged himself coming. He also began noticing opportunities to advance himself that he didn't seem able before. As he changed his thinking, he triggered the law of mind and law of mental equivalency. He created a clear picture of his goal by law of correspondence. His outer world, world began to reflect his new improved inner world. His beliefs about himself began to change. And by the way, by the law of attraction, people and resources began to appear to help him move toward his goal. As he contained concentrating on his desire, his values and motivations changed and he began developing the habits that lead to success. In success, he began moving forward at the rate of surprise even him. And so can you. The law of success are based on foundation principle that in order for you to succeed, you must first decide what success means to you. You can then begin to apply these laws to your definition of success to bring it more rapidly into your reality. 